Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. This is lesson number 3 in less than 20 minutes. In lesson number 1, we talked about the importance of derivative in mathematics. And we also learned what is the derivative. In lesson number 2, we went through the basic problems that you were supposed to learn in class 11 and class 12. And this is the last video in which we will do revision. But in this video, we are going to do something very important because I have seen so many students having trouble with chain rule and implicit differentiation. And it keeps on popping up everywhere in your engineering differentiation. Okay, point number one. How do you identify a chain function or a function of a function or a composite function? So that's like very easy. Look at this. You might have seen functions like tan x, log x, cos x, etc, etc. And you know that every function will be accompanied by an input variable. Otherwise, it will not be a function. If I write something like log, it, is a, it doesn't have any sense. When we talk casually, we might use log, cos, tan, etc. But when it comes in a problem, every function will have an input variable. And in the formula sheet that is given in the website, and in the last video also I displayed the formula sheet. I used the letter x for the input variable. Now imagine someone deleted that x and kept another function. So look at this. The original is tan x. But someone deleted that variable and kept another function. And that will be a chain function or a composite function. Look at this. The first one is tan x. Tan x means it is a complete function multiplied by log x. So we have to apply product rule. But look at the second one. I can see tan. It is not complete. When I searching for the variable, I didn't see x. Instead, there is another function. So, this is a chain function. Okay, I will give you more examples. Suppose you have tan inverse. Normally, the function will be tan inverse x. You can look at the formula sheet. You will see tan inverse x. But imagine someone deleted this x and they kept another function. For example, uh, sin x tan inverse sin x. So this is an example of a composite or a chain or a function of a function. Now look at this. In class 12th or maybe in class 11, you learn how to differentiate a chain function. Very simple. You keep on writing d by dx multiplied by d by dx multiplied by etc etc etc. Now, in engineering, we use the differentiation techniques as a tool. That means we are interested in the answer. We are not like artists to write step, 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 so many steps. We want the answers very fast. So I have a trick for you. Suppose you have tan brackets log x. Isn't it clear? It's a chain function. So, dy by dx will be. Okay, you have to ask a question to yourself. Are you able to see tan x or tan something? You are able to see tan something. The derivative of tan x is, someone tell me, what is the derivative of tan x? Yeah, 6 squared x. So, the derivative of tan something will be 6 squared x the same thing. Don't even bother to say log x. I saw tan something. The derivative is 6 square. The same thing. Multiply. Who said to multiply? Chain rule. 
Now you can forget about the first one. What is the next function? Is it log x or log something? Log x, the derivative is 1 by x. That's it. Suppose you have y is equal to sin root tan x. Okay. Look at this. There are three functions. Let's write the derivative first. What's the derivative of sin x? Cos x. What is the derivative of root x? 1 by 2 root x. What is the derivative of tan x? 6 squared x. What do you see here? Are you able to see sin x or sin something? Your response will be sin something. What is the derivative of sin something? Cos the same thing. Don't read cos root x. Read cos the same thing. Multiplied by. Now you can forget about this. What is the derivative of root something? Are you able to see root something? Or are you able to see root x? Root something. 1 by 2 root the same thing. Multiplied by. Now you can forget about the square root. Tan x. Tan x is 6 squared x. That's it. Now, by the way, don't cancel these things because this is the argument of cos. It, will not, it is not a product. I'll give you more examples. y is equal to log log sine e to the power tan inverse x. Okay, great. This is proper chain. What is the derivative of log something? Log x is 1 by x. So log something 1 by copy paste. Whatever happens, don't read log x because accidentally you'll write 1 by x. That is why I'm asking you to read log something. Now this is gone. Again, log something. So 1 by the same quantity. Multiply. What is the derivative of sine something? The derivative will be cos the same quantity multiplied by what is the derivative of e power something? The derivative of e power x is e power x. So e power something will be e power the same thing. Multiply tan inverse x 1 by 1 plus x square. Now practice more problems like this. Anyway, I'll introduce you to some very important problems here. Suppose y is equal to tan x squared into sin x. Now look at this. This is very interesting and very important because basically this is a chain because I'm not able to see tan x but I'm able to see tan something. What's the derivative of tan something? 6 squared, the same quantity. Multiplied by, oh, wait a minute. This is a product. Look, earlier we had a function of a function of a function of a function. But here it is different. First, it is tan something. And then that something part is a product. So apply product rule, x squared into cos x. I think you're like good with product rule now because in the last video we talked about it and I asked you to work out uh, like what you call a lot of problems till you're confident. Anyway, simplify this. You're not allowed to leave the answer like this. In examination, simplification is a must. It's a basic mathematical manners. You must simplify this. And I'll show you one more question that's like extra, extra, extra important. Suppose you have to differentiate sine to the power 4x. The first thing to do is you have to rewrite this function as sine x the whole power 4. Please understand this is a property from trigonometry. This and this are the same. Now it looks like x to the power 4. Can you see? x to the power 4 means variable to the power number. What is the derivative of x to the power 4? 
4 x to the power 3. So, what is the derivative of something? Is it x to the power 4? No, 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 no. Something to the power 4. So, 4 into same thing to the power 3. Multiply by cos x because you have to differentiate that something. But remember, you are not allowed to re what you call keep the answer like this. You have to simplify and write this as sin cube x into cos x. Now that's it. You work out a lot of problems in chain function. Use this trick. And if you like the trick, I strongly recommend support our channel, like our channel and share it with your friends. Okay. Let's continue with implicit differentiation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make you understand how to recognize implicit function. Look at this. From the last video, we saw um, simple functions like the constant, constant multiplied by function, function multiplied by function. That is the product rule. Sum of functions difference of functions. Now we saw uh, chain function. Now look at this. We are expecting two more types actually implicit and parametric. Parametric is very easy. I am sure you will have no trouble with parametric. But this is a very important one. You can easily identify implicit function because normally implicit functions will be a connection between the variables x and y in your mathematics textbook. But practically, it is not like that. Practically, it might be connecting profit with time. For example, I am studying the profit of a particular market, maybe silver market or a gold market or a petroleum thing or anything. So, I ended up designing the profit as a function in t. Now look at this, I might get p is equal to t square plus 7. So look at this, I am writing p as a function in t. Now imagine, when I model the function, I got something very complicated than this. I got something like log p minus t is equal to e to the power t to the power p. Now look at this. It will be really, really, really difficult to write P in terms of T in this relation. It will not be easy like this. Here we have a very simple relation, but here we have a very complicated relation connecting profit and time when I modeled the real life scenario. I hope you remember from lesson number one why we use mathematics. Okay. This is called an implicit relation. But like I told you long back, in pure mathematics, we learn only the techniques. And to learn the techniques, mathematicians use the letters X and Y. It can be profit, it can be time, it can be cost, it can be labor, it can be temperature, it can be velocity, anything that comes in your brain that depends on your application. Now imagine an expression x square plus y square minus x into y equal to 0. This will be called an implicit function. So basically implicit functions are relations connecting x and y. Now it is like very easy to differentiate this if you remember one point. Whenever you differentiate a function with respect to the same variable, it is enough to write the formula. If I differentiate sin x with respect to x, because sin x is created from x. If I differentiate x cube with respect to x, it is enough to write the formula. But if I differentiate x cube with respect to y, look, I am differentiating a function created with the variable x with respect to another variable. So write the derivative and multiply by the derivative of the variable because of chain rule. Because this is something cube. 
So 3 into same thing square multiplied by what is the derivative of x with respect to y? dx by dy. Okay, question number 1. x square plus y square is equal to 7. Is this implicit? Yes, because it's a relation in x and y. I am not able to write y in terms of x or x in terms of y. And the question is find dy by dx. Very simple. Just write differentiating both sides with respect to x. With respect to what? x. Now remember, when I differentiate x squared with respect to x, the derivative will be 2x. But now the warning. I am going to differentiate y squared with respect to another variable. y squared is made up of the variable y. So the derivative is not 2y. You have to multiply by dy by dx. By the way, we have to differentiate the right hand side. The derivative is 0. Now remember, we have to find dy by dx. Whatever you are trying to find is called the subject. And the subject should be kept on the left. So 2y dy by dx equal to minus 2x and cancel this out. So dy by dx will be minus x by y. One more question. Suppose we have x square plus 3x square into y square plus y square is equal to 63. Something that came in my brain. It's a relation in x and y. It is uh, implicit. I want to find dy by dx. Look at this. Since I want to find dy by dx, I know I do differentiate with respect to x. Because dy by dx means derivative of y with respect to x. So I'll write differentiating both sides with respect to x. What's the derivative of x square with respect to x? 2x. Plus, oh, look at this. We have to apply product rule. Because x is a variable, y is a variable. They are both variable function. We will apply product rule. So the derivative goes like, I write one of them. I will write the derivative of the second. That means we have to differentiate y squared with respect to x. So 2y is not enough. Plus y squared. Now differentiate x squared with respect to x. 2x. Plus what is the derivative of y? Ah, again, 2y dy by dx equal to 0. And I hope you did not forget the subject should be kept on the left. So 2x plus 3 into 2, that will be, I'll open the bracket. So 6x square y dy by dx plus 6xy squared plus 2y dy by dx equal to 0. That gives me 6x square y dy by dx plus 2y dy by dx is equal to minus 2x minus 6xy square. And solve for the subject. We want to find dy by dx. 6x square y plus 2y is equal to minus 2x plus 6xy square. You can take common and simplify. So that dy by dx equal to minus 2x plus 6xy square by 6x square y plus 2y. Okay, so that explains the concept of chain function and implicit. Now I'm going to wind up this video. I'll be back with more videos like this. And you have to do one very important thing. Find many problems similar to this and work out a lot of problems. So we'll meet very soon. Till then, my friends. Bye.